what I want to do is inspire you all, inspire you to help your patients or anybody, relatives, friends, anybody with food allergies. It's called menu planning, but actually it's about the whole picture about eating and enjoying food and the family joining in and everybody joining in. So it is menu planning, but it's with an add-on if you like. Okay, so let's kick off. Let's just remind ourselves, we've got this conference today about managing allergies, actually managing food allergy. What are the consequences of not managing it properly and not menu planning and not being organized? This is any of the things that could happen, which is obviously very worrying. Okay, the reality then isn't all, all parties and let's go and have fun. It's actually a lot of stress in the family. If, you know, for example, if there's somebody with a food allergy, they may well have asthma as well, multiple food allergies, other atopic conditions in the family, fussy eating, just a whole load of stuff going on, which actually makes the whole thing about even managing menus difficult because everybody's tired. It costs a lot of money maybe to go and buy things, to find foods. So there's all of that going on in families. And what we want to do is to help, to help these families plan, enjoy, and enjoy living rather than worrying about getting symptoms and managing those symptoms. Okay, does it have to be like this? Well, I think that we can overcome anything. So how, what can we do? What can we do to help these families and these individuals? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make managing the diet easy. We want to make the diet taste good. It's not very good having a plate of boiled rice and a bit of lettuce and a piece of boiled chicken. If it tastes horrible, it's not much fun. No one really wants to eat it. How can we make food taste good? We want to make the diet inclusive. There's no point in providing a great menu and then that person has to sit on their own in the corner or sit at sittings on their own. We want everybody to enjoy the food and let's make allergic food, food for allergic people, fun and nice and tasty, then everybody can have the same food and it can be inclusive. We want food to take out. A lot of people have busy, busy, busy lives these days. A lot of food is eaten on the hoof, in the car, on the way to somewhere, takeaways, restaurants. How can we manage that? How can we make sure that the diet is still managed well? We want to make the diet cheaper. How can we find foods that aren't so expensive that people can't afford them? Or if they are going to afford those foods, how can we eke those out or provide other options? And then we want to make the diet achievable. As a dietitian, I'm probably meant to be talking about nutrition, but I'm a great believer in if you can fulfill all of these points I've made, then good nutrition will follow because food will be enjoyed and fussy eating is a thing of the past. Okay, so what we need to do is start with a starting point. Some of the patients I see in my clinics are amazing. They cook with all the special flowers and they know all the egg replacements and they know all the products. And actually, I build on from that. Or you get the patient that comes in that doesn't even know that bread contains wheat or soya. They don't know that pasta doesn't have egg in most of the time. So you're actually building on the knowledge that people actually have to start with. Teaching them how to read food labels, how to go shopping. Um, talking about which foods are available and giving written and verbal information to help people go along and, and actually achieve this and, and maintain this. Okay, so let's start, start talking a little bit about food labelling. So people need to understand food labelling laws in order to go shopping and choose uh, the right sort of options. And you can see 14 different food types here. And these are foods that have to be labelled by law on manufactured pre-packed foods. And more recently, that's extended to uh, unpackaged foods in delicatessens, in restaurants. Um, if somebody's selling food on a market, they'll have to have available whether there's any of these 14 allergens within their products. And it's really important because it used to be that people were given a list. Oh, if you're allergic to milk, you've got to avoid these 30 names. And people were reading, oh, sodium caseinate. Oh, gosh, what, what were those lists? What was that name? Now, on a label, if it says sodium caseinate, a milk protein, in brackets afterwards, it has to say from milk. And that helps shopping. That helps the understanding. It's much better. OK, here's an example then here of... Um, I'm not sure the laser point is working, of the old look labels that had the contains box um, and now the new look labels where the allergens, the 14 allergens have to be highlighted in the ingredients and so this makes it much easier to read the label and actually read the full ingredients label rather than relying on the contains box whereas some people just used to read the contains box and eat the product and the contains box was wrong and 
people would have an allergic reaction because they hadn't read the full listing. So hopefully this will encourage people to do that. This is an example of, um, if you're eating out, how they might show the allergen labelling on foods you're eating away from home. For example, on this menu, this sandwich board here, it's highlighted exactly. Um, and that's something that is expected now. Um, and if you don't see that, then we need to do something about that. And we need to make sure those catering outlets do know that they should be doing that, and they should do. OK, so what about avoiding foods then? Is it easy to avoid dairy? Well, when it looks like this, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Everybody can say, oh, yeah, easy, I, I can avoid dairy. But what about this? OK, so this is a mirror image. Everything on the left-hand side contains milk. And on the right-hand side, there's no milk. And I think you'll agree with me that a lot of these, these products, you could easily pick up the wrong one, couldn't you? Or you might think, oh, yeah, I've had that stalk margarine that, that's, that's dairy-free and pick up the wrong one. So it just shows how you need to check ingredients really, really carefully. And Pitta Bread's in Sainsbury's, they've got milk in. In Tesco's, they haven't, And for example. So what we want to do is encourage label reading. OK, so I, I thought you might enjoy this. This is some hot dogs um, that clearly have milk in. So I've just picked this out as an example. So what about these hot dogs? And I've highlighted the sort of an ingredient that you might be thinking about avoiding for some people. So some don't contain milk, some do contain potato, some contain pea, some have celery, some have potato, uh, some have guar gum. There's a whole another three. Look at those. So the ingredients of one thing, this is hot dogs, I've shown you seven labels, is completely different. So the message here is that actually when you go off to the cinema and you're about to have your hot dog with your mustard, which you're balancing with your popcorn trying not to spill it, what you're thinking is, has this got milk in or not? Am I going to risk it? What's the uh, consequences of risking it? And actually, can I plan ahead to make sure there's no reaction? Can I ask the ingredients? And, and this is an, one example. OK, another thing when you're menu planning is you don't want to over-restrict the diet, but you need to restrict it very strictly for some people, it just depends. And it's having an understanding of this. If you need to, going to the um, allergy clinic, coming to see your, your health professionals, making sure that allergy tests are up to date and interpreted, and there's an understanding of what the patient needs to be doing. Okay, so they can either completely avoid the food or eat it to their tolerance level. And I'm going to show you an example. So if somebody, and actually 80% of egg allergics, people with a type one IgE mediated egg allergy, um, can tolerate well-cooked egg. So we don't want those 80% of people not to have cakes and feel left out and not to have other foods if they can have them. So it's giving them that understanding. And these are examples of what we consider to be well-cooked egg in cake, in a sausage, for example, if sausage, some sausages have egg if they're well-cooked, and well-cooked um, egg pasta Corn mince has got egg in, egg white, and if that's well cooked in a lasagna or uh, bolognese, then that's considered to be um, well cooked. But the loosely cooked is these examples where egg is a bit runny, a little bit sticky, as in the meringues. Okay, and then the raw egg. So people don't realise that royal icing is actually uh, sugar, and then they add egg white that's been dried. It hasn't, it's only been pasteurised, which isn't enough to change the allergens to make it into what we consider well-cooked egg. And if people don't understand that, then the, those people will be having allergic reactions or the people they're cooking for. And I've had people come to clinic and they say, oh, my child, my child's got a wheat allergy. And I said, why do you think that? Oh, well, because I made a cake. I made an egg-free cake and... and, and um, uh, it must be the wheat that's the problem. And I said, oh, what did you put on, on the top of the cake? And we went through the Tesco website and they had a look and they went, oh, that icing sugar. And that was the one that was the royal icing, of course, with the egg white in. So it, was, it, it wasn't an egg-free cake at all. And it wasn't wheat that was a problem. OK, so what we need to do is go to the supermarket and find suitable foods. So let's have a look at how we do that. And we want to encourage our, the parents to do that. You do not have to buy all special foods when you're managing um, diets, restricted diets. So it's all about finding those things, being positive, thinking about what you can eat, what that child can eat, rather than this whole list people send to school, can't have, can't have, can't have, it's all negative, nobody's listening to me. Come on, let's be positive. OK, let's have a list of can't haves. Let's have the can have list much bigger. Let's talk about the things that are suitable. 
Okay, I like this slide because I think this is a really, really positive message. All of these foods are everyday foods from the supermarket that you can pick up, and it's the sort of things that anybody without an allergy would go and buy, okay? But they're all free from wheat, gluten, milk, egg, nuts, and soya. Every single one of those foods. And actually, I'd love to get a massive, five massive uh, supermarket baskets, take them along, trolleys, and just fill those baskets with all the food that's free of all those allergens. And you will find that much, five bar baskets full in a, in a big supermarket. And I like that. I like the fact everybody can have these. They're the same price as everyone's foods. Everybody's inclusive with these foods. So it makes a really important part of the diet. It's not all about special, finding special diet foods, and it's not all about making your own foods. You can find foods in the supermarket. Um, Food Maestro is a recent um, app that's actually developed as part of the team here. Um, and. Uh, through this app, you can identify foods for all sorts of diets that are in the supermarkets and special diet foods. So it's a really good free service um, where you can identify foods for special diets. And the thing I like about it, if, for example, you're allergic to cinnamon, which some of my patients are, tomato Heinz ketchup has cinnamon in. But if you buy Heinz tomato ketchup, it just says spices. If you put it through this app, it will tell you it's got cinnamon in it. So it gives you more information, which is really helpful. Okay, let's talk about free from foods. Free from foods, I'd say the biggest thing with those, they're fantastic, it's great to have a great range of these free from foods. I'm delighted to see these in the supermarkets. What I'm not delighted is that my patients don't read labels half the time. So they eat a dairy-free, gluten-free, wheat-free, soya-free, nut-free cake, thinking it's egg-free. Nowhere does it say it's egg-free. It clearly says in the ingredients label it's got egg in, but people don't read the label, and they presume free from means free from everything. So that's a good message just to remind everybody that actually free from is great for some things and really bad for other things. So just checking, seeing what the products are available. And the good thing is the ranges are getting bigger and bigger all the time. So going out there and seeing what's available and, and supporting those products, using them, otherwise they will disappear. Okay, just to share with you some um, products then, if you're not cooking and you're just buying stuff off the shelf, Kirsty's um, are doing adult and children's meals, free from a lot of allergens. However, their lasagna does contain egg. So again, it's a case of checking the ingredients. Alumi are a company that make meals. They're free of all those 14 allergens that I showed you. They come in pouches. And um, some people will say, oh, why would I want to eat out of a pouch? Actually, it could be quite convenient if you're going somewhere and you don't want to make a fuss and you haven't got time to prepare anything. You might want to take a pouch of food and have that available. Um, also, it's long life, so it doesn't have to be refrigerated. So there's all sorts of benefits, and they're very tasty. Amy's Kitchen are vegetarian meals, which are actually, um, some of them are dairy-free uh, uh, and egg-free as well. Uh, they're gluten and wheat-free, all of them. Uh, egg-free alternatives, so if you're avoiding egg, egg-free quiche, which might sound crazy, but you'd be surprised, it's great. Um, you can get all the mayonnaises and things that are egg-free and egg replacers if you use them. Um, but actually, I've also put the Yazda, um, which is the only one I could find, a salad cream, which just happens to be free of egg and milk. Um, it does contain soya, so, and it's something like 60p. So actually, that, those products are available if you want to look for them. Dairy-free ice creams, there's actually so many I couldn't fit them on my slide, but I've put a whole load of ones there for you to see. And in terms of milk, the only milk-free cones I could find were the ones I've put on there that didn't have traces of cow's milk. And I thought that was quite a useful thing, as kids quite like ice cream, and, and kids uh, have the majority of uh, milk allergy. And then you've got your dairy-free yogurts. So they can be coconut-based, pea-based, soya-based, uh, I don't know, whatever based, rice based, all sorts, nut based. So again, they're available. You need to find them, read the ingredients, double check. They make a great addition. And actually, if parents, some parents say, oh, I can't afford, I can only afford one every week. I say, well, just get the empty pot, keep the pot, fill it with something else like banana custard that you've made at home that's free from soya and dairy and everything else and give that to that child because actually, some children just eating out of a pot, like everybody else having a, out of a yogurt pot. That means such a lot to them. This is some cheesecakes that you can buy. I mean, there's all sorts of things available. 
These are some cheeses. There's a whole load of dairy-free, soya-free cheeses, as well as just the soya cheeses. And they're great. You can get ones on pizzas. There's parmesans. There's all sorts. You can cook with them or put them in sandwiches. There's sliced ones, grated ones. So they're out there. And the dairy-free milks, there's a whole load of milks. And I was delighted yesterday. I was in Waitrose, and there were so many dairy-free milks on the shelves. I was really pleased to see them. OK, so I've put no because lactose-free um, products actually contain whole cow's milk protein. They will cause allergic reactions in children who have milk allergy. It's the lactose, the milk sugar, that's been sort of taken away from them, if you like. Um, so don't get that mixed up. Uh, and also Rice Dream is a rice-based milk, which for children under four and a half is not recommended as their main milk drink because of links with uh, arsenic and childhood cancer. Okay, dairy-free creams. There's a whole load of creams. There's coconut, soya, oat. Uh, uh, what else have we got? Um, rice creams. There's all sorts. So again, you can use those in cooking. You can put them on strawberries. Do what you like with them. And the good thing about these is for children who perhaps need that little bit more energy, who aren't growing as well because of their multiple allergies or their fussy eating, this is a great way to add extra calories rather than going down the whole medical route of prescribing like a powder that you mix into things. This is a perfect way to add the calories to foods. And then you've got white sauce, which just happens to be free from uh, wheat, gluten, milk, egg, soya and nuts. Okay, nut-free products with Christmas coming, the uh, advent calendars, um, cakes, wheat-free products. I'm just zipping through all of these. Um, there's pastas, there's breads. When you're celiac, you can get uh, gluten-free products on prescription. When you have a food allergy, you generally can't, but actually a few people do. And um, it's, you, know, you can request it from the GP. They can say no, but they may say, sometimes they say yes. So it just depends on the case if it's a multiple food allergy, failing to thrive child, perhaps, you know, uh, faltering growth, sorry, child, then perhaps they will be prescribed. If not, um, there are more and more products coming to the supermarkets and the prices are generally getting better. And I try and get people to cook things because it is much simpler than they think, but uh, not, that's not for everybody. Okay, so um, useful products here. You can, there's a fantastic product directory um, from the, on the Foods Matter website. And I can see Michelle there in the hat in the middle. That's her website. What a brilliant website for finding products. And then we've got Goodness Direct, which is a, just one of many companies. It's four and a half thousand products. So all the dairy-free cheeses and milks and creams, even if you use it just to see what's available there, um, you know, it's a great place to find products. OK, I like talking about recipes because if people feel they want to cook and they want to cook for the family, which I'm hoping they will, then how can we make it easy for them? How can we plan and help them, help them provide nice food, tasty food, good food? OK, the parents need to have their understanding of what they need to avoid. And I know this sounds crazy, but sometimes patients come to clinic and you say, so let's just check what it is you're avoiding. And they're like, oh... Um, yes, uh, ooh, can't remember. They can't, you know, have got three children all with allergies, they can't quite. So it's just making sure the parents have an understanding of exactly where they are and if they're avoiding egg, can they include well baked egg or not, and all those sorts of things. So it's just checking that. Um, so are they single or multiple exclusions? The more foods you exclude, the harder it is to manage the diet. Um, so it's just keeping that in mind. Um, I think, I personally think the hardest combination, I think the hardest diet is the wheat-free diet, and I think the ha hardest combination is wheat and egg exclusion together. That's, that's what I personally think. You may have different opinions. Okay, why are we bothering to replace foods? To make the diet taste good, to give variety, nutrition, all those quality of life issues. And it breaks my heart when, you know, you say to a child, I'm so pleased you've outgrown your... Uh, you know, it's just great. You can have cake now. You've outgrown your allergy to well-cooked egg. And the mum says, oh, yeah, thank goodness he can have a birthday cake for the first time, you know, and it's a six- or seven-year-old. You can make egg-free birthday cake so easily. So it's just, let's tell the patients that. Let's tell those parents and those grannies. They should be baking. 
Okay, so when we're talking about replacement ingredients, if you're making a shepherd's pie at home, make it for the whole family. Just make sure the stock cube doesn't have soya in it, if that's what you're excluding. Make sure that the mashed potato has a dairy-free, soya-free spread or whatever. Just, it's easy to adapt family meals, spaghetti bolognese, roast dinner. You know, there's so many easy meals that the whole family can have. If you've got chicken fillet, cut it up into little strips, run it under the tap or dip it in your dairy-free um, uh, milk and then roll it in rice flour, fry it, and you've got your own chicken nuggets. And they're much nicer than the way if you've ever seen them being made. So, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be difficult. It can be easy. And then trying new recipes, new ideas. So if you're replacing egg, did you know you can use vinegar, which sort of coagulates things, and that binds them together? You can use chia seeds, mashed banana. You can use pureed courgette, any pureed vegetables or fruits egg replacers, tofu, flaxseed, there's a whole load of stuff. And this is an example of tofu. So if you get the, the tofu, the creamy tofu, mix it up, and then you can make quiche, you can make omelette. Actually, it's really nice, and the texture's exactly like egg. You can make egg fried rice. I, I'd like to do some taste tests and actually say, right, which is the egg and which isn't? And I don't think you can always tell. Okay. Um, Gluten and wheat replacements. People think, oh, I can't have wheat, it's a tragedy. What can we use instead? There's actually so many things and they're so available these days. I find actually the world food aisles fantastic for obtaining some of the products. And the prices are so much better. So you, uh, coconut flour, for example, or powdered coconut you can get. It's actually a tenth of the price than if you buy it online. It's, it's such a difference. So let's just go through some of the grains. So amaranth, buckwheat, cassava, chestnut flour. If you, if, there's certain nut flours are fantastic as a replacement for wheat if you can tolerate those. Chickpea. Did you know that bizan and gram and chana is another name for chickpea? And again, if someone's allergic to those, they need to know those names because they're not one of the 14 foods. If they're hidden on a label, then next time you eat uh, poppadoms, pack of Sherwood's poppadoms, have a look at the ingredients and it will say, um, it, oh, I've forgotten the word now. It will say uh, the lentil flour, sorry, erd flour or urid flour, and that means lentil flour. If you're allergic to lentils, I've had so many patients allergic to lentils that didn't know that and are having reactions. It's just a simple thing. Coconut, ground flours, hemp flour, lentil flour, um, maize flour, okay, millet, potato, all of these things are different replacements for wheat, for gluten grains. And it makes it easy then to manage the diet, easier. Okay, I just want to show you this as an example. So um, we've got some um, quinoa, quinoa, call it what you like. So we've got the, the flake, the, um, the grains at the top. So if you boil those, then they're like a couscous. So you immediately you've got a side dish. If you use the flakes here, then you've got um, flapjack or porridge. Okay. If you need to increase calories, you can put some of that cream in, remember, a bit of oil. And then you've got the flour, so you can make your chapati with it, you can make cakes with it, you can mix it in the mi a flour mix. There's a Dove's Farm one. You can make your own mixes or buy other ones. And quinoa or quinoa is an ingredient of that. There's four other ingredients as well. So suddenly there's all these possibilities. Okay, this is an example of pancakes. These pancakes don't have milk, glu uh, wheat, gluten, egg, soya, nuts. They look pretty normal to me. They taste good. These are all examples of foods that are milk, egg, soya, wheat, gluten, and nut free. It looks pretty normal to me. A child will sit down at a table with their family and eat things that look normal and taste pretty good most of the time. Even egg-free meringues. Yorkshire puddings that are milk and egg-free are so easy to make, you wouldn't believe. There's, there's two ingredients in them. Okay, these are some cookbooks. Okay, so when we think about the reality of food, of eating, of shopping, of cooking, of family life. Is this the reality? Is this how it's got to be? Or can we help it be this? Thank you for listening. Tony, for, for people out there who are 
again, uh, use the example of people who are feeling a bit isolated and, and perhaps don't have such great support as a, an expert dietitian on their shoulder. Uh, what, what's a good patient resource? Um, I mean, you've given us lots of gems. Where, where can people be directed to to find those sorts of gems about, you know, relax about cooking, you can do it this way. There are, there are plenty of other ways to do this that aren't painful. What, what, what's a good resource for them? Okay, so you've got Michelle's website, which has got lots of recipes and lots of tips and things. Anaphylaxis Campaign have got lots of really excellent fact sheets, which are written by healthcare professionals. And Allergy UK also have those, as well as some videos of uh, recipes and cooking, Mm. um, which are really, really helpful. Brilliant. Can I just ask Michelle to tell us about her website then? I was just going to suggest that you also look at your Google food blogs, food allergy blogs, Mm. Um, mums with allergies. There are lots of blogs out there with fantastic support, for particularly for, for mums with, with allergic children. Lots of them have recipes, and lots of them have ideas, and really well worth doing. Yes, I agree. There's some. Oh, sorry. Yes, I should be plugging my own website, shouldn't I? Um, we, we have. Uh, it's called Foods Matter. There's, as Tanya said, there's a massive directory of products, but we also have. God, I think it's about 850 recipes. A lot of them are, are adult focused rather than child focused, but everything is gluten free. Everything is wheat free. 95% are dairy free and lots of egg free and everything else. So you can adapt. I mean, really, just find an idea and adapt. That's the best thing to do for whatever it is you need. Also, there's the Allergy Show in London and also one in Liverpool that happens once a year. And there's some really, really good. There's recipe, um, uh, lots of recipes, cookbooks. There's a vegan show going on at the same time. So there's loads of like milk and egg free things. There's um, stalls with different products and different flowers and cooking demonstrations as well. Great. Okay. Any other questions for time? Uh, Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much.